Good evening and welcome to Blue Star Limited Q3 and 9M FY23 earnings conference call. We have with us today from the management, Mr. B. Tiagarajan, Managing Director, Blue Star Limited, and Mr. Nikhil Sohoni, Group Chief Financial Officer, Blue Star Limited. As a reminder, all participants' lines will be in listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. V. Tiagarajan. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for joining this call. Um, actually, we should have done this tomorrow, being the Union Budget Day. We thought that we will go ahead and complete this interaction today itself. Uh, you might have uh, received the results, which have been already uploaded. As you can uh, see, it, uh, it is for the fifth consecutive quarter we have done well. Uh, now, all segments have done well, and uh, I, I have been, been intimating uh, in the television channels or in the press, uh, and to some of you, uh, the margin continued to be under pressure, and uh, the good news is that uh, we are on course to achieve what we wanted to achieve. So, in, in, in our view, uh, we are performing according to the plan that we had for the financial year. Uh, in uh, B2C segment, uh, the uh, preparations for the summer season is on and the CCT factory has just gone on uh, commercial production. And we know that this particular quarter will be a very important quarter for build up to the summer. And in B2B segment, as you would have read, the order inflows are very healthy, order execution space is uh, actually very satisfying and uh, the uh, Blue Star engineering and the electronics or the uh, professional electronics and uh, industrial segment that is also doing well. Uh, now, uh, we, I have with me Mr. Nikhil Sohani, Group Chief Financial Officer, and uh, he will give you the comprehensive update on the quarter that ended December 31, 2022. And uh, later on, uh, he will answer your questions where I have to step in, I will step in. Uh, in summary, uh, we, we, we are very, very optimistic about the prospects for Blue Star for this financial year. Uh, we will continue to grow faster than the market. We will stay focused on costs. We will uh, continue our policy of prudent capital allocation. And we have set for ourselves uh, pragmatic growth targets and uh, I am certain that we will end the fourth quarter also on a high note and uh, we are well prepared for the summer season ahead as well. We know very well there will be certain headwinds as I had been telling uh, and we have learned how to cope with that. Uh, beginning tomorrow itself and I am certain in case there is a custom duty increase on components, many of you will have a question how the margin will be impacting and how the summer season will be, so many capacities getting added, how the competition in room air conditioner segment will be and whether there will be inflationary pressure or some other reason due to which uh, whether the project execution will slow down. Our risk management framework is comprehensive. And we have, you have seen our track record, and that is how we will proceed further. So I will hand it over to Mr. Nikhil, Nikhil Sohani for the comprehensive update on the quarter, and then we will uh, answer your questions. Thank you very much. Okay, Nikhil. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Agarajan. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Nikhil Sohani, and I will be providing you an overview of the results of the Blue Star for the quarter ended December 2022. So despite uh, inflationary pressures and general slowdown in the Western economies, business and consumer sentiments in India continued to be optimistic during the quarter. Inquiries and order inflows in our B2B business continue to be buoyant. 
Simultaneously, the demand for our B2C products continued to be healthy. Consequently, we ended the quarter on a high note with growth across all segments and a robust order book. Financial highlights for the quarter ended December 31, 2022 on a consolidated basis are summarized below. Revenue from operations for Q3 FY23 grew by 18.7% to 1788.2 crores as compared to rupees 1506.2 crores in Q3 of last year. EBITDA excluding other income and finance income for the quarter was 104.7 crores uh, which was a margin of 5.9% of revenue as compared to 90.6 crores a margin of 6% of revenue in the quarter 3 of last year. Till Q2 of this year, the company was following a written down value method for accounting depreciation. However, during the current financial period, the company has capitalized new capacity, including plant and machinery and factory building. And due to this capacity expansion, it was decided to relook at the pattern of consumption of the future economic benefits of the property, plant, and equipment. Having concluded that, it was decided that a straight line method of depreciation reflects the pattern in which the benefit from the use of the assets are expected to be consumed. Accordingly, the depreciation method has been changed from WDV to straight line method with effect from October 1, 2022. This led to a lower depreciation charge for the quarter by rupees 10.8 crores. Profit before tax grew by rupees 80.1 crore in quarter three of current year as compared to rupees 70.3 crores in quarter three of last year. Tax expense for the current quarter was 21.6 crores as compared to 22.8 crores in the quarter three of last year. Net profit for quarter three grew to rupees 58.4 crores as compared to rupees 47.6 crores in the quarter three of last year. Carry forward order book as of December 31, 2022 grew by 47.3% to a record rupees 4,862 4, crores as compared to rupees 3,301.3 crores as of December 31 of last year. Capital employed as on December 31 in the current year increased to rupees 1,505.6 crores as compared to rupees 1,107.4 crores as on December 31, 2021. This was owing to high inventory holding to prepare for the upcoming season and mitigate the supply chain risks, as well as the capital investments for manufacturing capacity expansion projects at WADA and by the subsidiary Blue Star Climatic at its plant at Sri City. Consequently, we have ended the quarter with a net borrowing of rupees 395.9 crores with a debt equity ratio of 0.36 on a net basis as compared to a net borrowing of 165.1 crore and a debt equity of 0.18 as on December 31, 2021. Coming to business highlights, the first segment one is the electromechanical projects and commercial air conditioning system segment. Here the segment revenue grew 20.5% to rupees 1000 crores in quarter three of the current year as compared to rupees 829.9 crore in the quarter three of last year. Segment result was rupees 71.7 crores that was 7.2% of revenue in the current quarter as compared to 52.4 crores or 6.3% of revenue in the quarter three of last year. Order inflow for the quarter grew by 97.1% to rupees 1680.8 crores as compared to rupees 852.8 crores in the quarter three of last year. Coming to electromechanical project business, the investment plans in infrastructure and manufacturing facilities continue to be actively pursued, leading to an improvement in inquiries and order finalizations. We continue to witness healthy order inflow from all segments, including factories and data centers. We also booked significant orders in the newly entered railway electrification segment. Carry forward order book for the electromechanical projects business stood at rupees 3685.2 crores as on December 31, 2022, as compared to rupees 2310.87 crores as on December 31, 2021, which was a growth of 59.5%. 
Major orders were received during the quarter from Bangalore Metro Railway Co Rail Corporation and Central Organization for Railway Electrification. Coming to commercial air conditioning system, the demand from government, industrial, healthcare, and hospitality sectors continued to be encouraging. This coupled with continued focus on channel expansion across tier 1, 2, 3, and 4 towns has enabled growth in the revenue during the quarter. We continue to maintain our number one position in conventional and inverted duct air conditioning system as well as scroll chillers and second position in VRS and screw chillers. Some of the major orders received during the quarter were from Udaipur Cement Works Limited, Reliance, Projects and Property, etc. to name a few. We have also received a major order from Municipal Corporation for a newly launched state-of-art large capacity centrifugal chillers. Coming to international business, we observed growth across all segments with increasing demand for our products in international markets. We witnessed strong demand for our room air conditioners and VRFs and entered the quarter with a healthy order book. The pace of execution of projects and order inflow in Qatar witnessed slowdowns due to preparations and restrictions in the run-up to the FIFA World Cup. The operations of the joint venture at Malaysia continues to be impacted owing to the slowdown in construction and order finalization amidst weak macroeconomic conditions in the country. We will continue to focus on the expansion of the Blue Star product range and build brand awareness and brand visibility in different markets that we are present in. Coming to segment two, that is unitary products, the revenue grew 15.1% to rupees 701.9 crores in the quarter three of the current year, as compared to rupees 609.7 crores in the quarter three of last year. Segment result improved to rupees 51.8 crores, which was 7.4% of revenue in quarter three of the current year, as compared to rupees 38.8 crores. 6.4% of revenue in quarter three of last year. This was due to benefit of scale and higher share of revenue from our own manufactured products. Cooling and purification products business, despite subdued festive demand, our room air conditioner business registered a growth of 15% with channels beginning to stock up in December for the upcoming season. We grew in line with the market and maintained a market share of 13.25%. The new plant at Sri City commenced commercial production in January 2023 and is expected to aid improvement in margins going forward. Commercial refrigeration business, it continued to witness traction across all segments with a substantial increase in consumption levels. We also witnessed strong demand from tier three, four and five cities enabling growth in revenue for the quarter. We have also been receiving major orders for cold storage for logistics segment, which is expected to offer significant opportunities in the coming months. We continue to maintain our leadership position in deep freezers, storage water coolers, and modular cold rooms. Some of the major orders received during the quarter were from Reliance Retail, Dr. Reddy's Pharma, Milma, Hudson Agro and several proprietary agro customers to name a few. Segment three, that is professional electronics and industrial systems. Here the revenue grew by 29.3% to 86.2 crores in the current quarter as compared to rupees 66.7 crore in the quarter three of the last year. Segment result was rupees 10.9 crores in the current quarter as compared to rupees 12.8 crores in the quarter three of last year. We are impacted by planned investment in business development, marketing and other initiatives for future growth. We continue to witness strong demand for our healthcare offerings driven by increasing awareness and investments in the sector. Demand for non-destructive testing business from industrial sector and data security solutions from BFSI sector also continue to be encouraging. Major orders were back from ArcelorMittal, Nippon Steel India Limited, Indian Overseas Bank, Bharat Heavy Electricals, ICICI Bank, and Hero Motor Co-op, to name a few. Coming to business outlook, the company has performed well for the fifth consecutive quarter and expects to maintain the growth momentum in the coming quarters. 
will continue to stay focused on rejigging our product portfolio, introduction of new product categories, and expansion in domestic and international markets. Simultaneously, the company is investing in enhancing its R&D capabilities and various programs to mitigate supply chain risks and profitability improvement. We are optimistic about the prospects for the fourth quarter. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm done with the opening remarks. I'd like to now pass it back to the moderator, who will open the floor to questions. We'll try and answer as many questions as we can. To the extent we are unable to, we'll get back to you via email. With that, we are open for questions. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask question, please press star one. We have a first question from the line of Ravi Swaminathan with Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, thanks a lot for taking my question and congrats on a butcher of numbers. Uh, so we had seen margin expansion in the project and cooling productiveness. Uh, uh, more than 7% we had clocked this quarter. How sustainable is this? Uh, how do we think about profitability in both the segments? And also on the professional e and segment, it had dropped to 12 and for 12.7 percent. Uh, historical numbers used to be 16, 17 percent average. Why did it drop so much? So we see thought process would be great. Uh, Ravi, thank you for the question. Thank you for joining the call as well. Um, see, in the electromechanical projects business, uh, so you are aware it is electromechanical projects and package air conditioning. That's a combined segment actually. There are quite a bit of equipment sale as well. Mm -hmm. So quarter to quarter, this margin may vary depending on the product mix. Somewhere the products will be higher, somewhere the projects will be higher. Yeah. Now, the other thing is also which project is getting executed faster. There, there are, you know, it's not that all projects are booked in the same margin. Okay. Now, uh, we are very happy that we could deliver uh, this uh, margin results this quarter. But the outlook we will continue to maintain as six to six and a half percent. Okay. Now, anything comes more than that in a particular quarter, it is welcome. I, I would like to maintain six to six and a half percent in that segment. Now, in the cooling product segment, uh, there has not been, uh, you know, you're aware that uh, we had increased the prices uh, five times consecutively, and uh, but the post summer we have been maintaining the same price level because you have to manage the market share versus the margin that we'll earn. This is one part of it. Two, we sincerely hoped that the commodity prices softening will help us to improve the margins. We had indicated in the last conference call our margin will may improve, but then it is getting offset by the rupee depreciation. So that is the issue there. Now, whether the obvious question, which we didn't ask, somebody else is going to ask is, will we be increasing the prices going forward? Now, uh, we, are in, we are in an off season. The build up to the summer is going to take place and new range of products are getting introduced. And quite a bit of those pro products will be from CCT also. Now, uh, this again is in the public domain. I had talked about it. You are yeah, CCT provides uh, not only the new affordable range of products. It is also going to be uh, yeah, yeah, uh, cost efficient location, basically because incoming raw material as well as outbound material meant for which Blue Star will be sourcing from Blue Star Climate Limited. Uh, is likely to provide some. Of course, uh, in this financial year, one month, two, three months of production is not going to make it, but, but the story is there. There is a leverage in terms of logistics and working capital. So you can imagine that 10 to 12 days the material was in the transit pipeline itself. Here in CCT, can serve overnight any of the locations in South. So 
there is is there a room for uh, price increase i ha we have to necessarily watch who is launching which product during the season you you from now on you will see i think our uh, product uh, launches uh, will be from february 7th onwards in various locations you have to watch how what is being and eventually the market determines the price uh, we are clear about our direction to grow our market share to 15 that is not going to be at any cost we we have to manage our costs in order to compete there to get there second we will be going ahead and ensuring that we deliver the profits the outlook there remains unaltered it is 8 to 8.5% operating margin we, we we are very confident of we will try to deliver more this way we are equally you should look at the when it comes to the pvt part of it there is interest uh, depreciation on the capex cycle we are into see we are very happy about the capex cycle across the country because we are benefiting through the business that is coming in in many segments actually the whether it is we uh, are package air conditioning or it is connected to electromechanical projects we are seeing this capex uh, cycle is benefiting us immensely but blue star also is in a high capex cycle after wada plant it is ccd phase one and ccd phase two will come up within a year so therefore uh, we are and as nikhil explained we have changed the methodology to uh, the straight line uh, method and we are prudent in ensuring that our cap capacity expansion in line with our growth so therefore the bottom line is it is it is the margin pressure will continue due to competition but we are very clear about our goal and i think we have we have we have delivered what we promised or we have only exceeded and i am confident that we will do that and the professional e and i segment sir margin yeah. so uh, i'm sorry i forgot about the question look at that segment i don't think the top line and bottom line should have any correlation at all for the simple reason you do have you know it is also a agency business you are getting some we are a system integrator you know our own manufactured items are not there at all you are getting something and you are doing the value addition locally number one number two is in the medical electronics business we are doing refurbishing as well Uh, exactly like project business in one quarter something will happen another quarter something will not happen so do not i am of the view uh, there is a top line to bottom line comparison there on a regular basis will not be a right thing to do you have to do, see on a full year basis how it is and it will be the margin of last year will be maintained there got it sir thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen in the interest of time and fairness to all participants kindly restrict questions to two per participant if you still have more questions please join the queue afresh we have next question from the line of sandeep tulsian with jm financial please go ahead yeah hi uh, good evening sir Our first question is uh, pertaining to uh, the industry profitability uh, where of course a lot of guys are setting up local capacity that will increase materially Uh, but at the same time we see barring the two listed players voltas blue star uh, all the other listed players are making a loss uh, right from lloyd to ifb uh, walpool or hitachi so where do you see the profitability normalizing over what time period uh, going forward if you could give your thoughts on that please yeah so this is a period where multiple things are happening right so that's that's why this question will keep coming up it's not only you as analysts uh, as management we or our board all stakeholders keep asking the same question uh, what's really happening one is india's penetration in room air conditioner segment is very very low it is some 7% uh, say penetration it has got the question is at some point of a time it should rapidly move up to touch at least 25% so there is a huge market growth opportunity is there and that's how it has happened in many segments there is going to be a explosive growth in terms of demand and even the weather conditions are changing and urbanization and disposable income that is where that part is happening 
Now, uh, importantly, uh, some point of a time, it is not affordable, not because of the capital cost, but the recurring costs. But thanks to the energy labeling, uh, air conditioner con consumes only uh, 20% of what it consumed in 2020 in terms of energy. So therefore, that energy efficiency is helping people to, uh, you know, actually reduce their recurring expenses. So there is a growth that is going to take place. Thanks to the PLI scheme, there is indigenization that is taking place and there is a capacity expansion that is taking place. And therefore, there is going to be also the, uh, there is production happening in a big way in the country. Now, PLI itself is also going to be based on the incremental sales over FI22, uh, sorry, FI21. So the, the uh, every brand wants to derive a PLI benefit, they have to go ahead and show incremental sale in that particular component, which was imported earlier, now you are making yourself because it is not on the finished goods. So therefore, the companies, uh, I have been maintaining this, that they have the headroom actually as a PLI benefit also in order to pass on and grow the market. They want to grow and they will get the PLI benefit if they grow and in the process the market also is going to grow. Now, competitive intensity will be high whenever there is going to be growth. Why everybody is eyeing this market? Because they know this penetration is going to grow. Whether it is Bureau of Energy Efficiency or ozone cell, in the India Cooling Action Plan, all of them, and the bilateral agencies, all of them are actually worried about the huge growth that is going to take place and therefore what all has to be done in order that our carbon footprint is. So their figure also shows there is going to be huge growth. So the opportunity is their competition is intensifying. Now from Blue Star point of view, we are, uh, we are prepared to compete. So look back, 2010 we were asked to look at our last entry and how you will survive as a B2 company in B2C part of it. We did. Then they said, look, beyond 5% market share, whether you will grow, you are largely institutional player. So we did grow. When it became double digit, will it become double digit? That was the question. Now the market share, we are moving up towards 15%. We have not stated we want to become number one. We have not stated we want to become number two. We have not stated that we want to become a 20% market share player. Our goal, we believe, is doable. And uh, our uh, segments and our product portfolio will have to be looked at closely, which we are working. We have, what we have done is only now 50% plus. We have some more to do in order to ensure that we are able to deliver consistent results in terms of product portfolio, in terms of distribution footprint, in terms of our own manufacturing capacity. All our actions are taking place. Now, if you ask me a question where the margin will end up, I, I'm, I'm not able to answer that at all because it is dependent on who are all going to do what. But I am confident that the Blue Star will reach 15% market share. Blue Star will deliver at least the 8% operating margin. That much visibility conviction we have got. And uh, we know which segment we have to focus. We are, we are a player who, who, is, uh, who is significant in institutional sales. We are number one there. We do extremely well in quite a few markets. In quite a few geographies within India, we hold number one or number two position. We have to replicate that largely in the North India market, in the Hindi-speaking belt by and large. So uh, I am not... I am not, and this is what I keep telling internally as well, able to, or I am not willing to, rather, think about what will be two years from now, what will be three years from now, for the simple reason this business itself is like T20 cricket, which I keep repeating. Second is, right now, my uh, team, my management, my colleagues on the board, all of them I say this is like the test match cricket takes session by session. Have a long term goal which is uh, pragmatic and keep doing the corrective actions then and there. 
that is the only way to deliver consistent results if you ask me at any cost i am going to get the market share no blue star will not do that this is where i am i it you can we one can endlessly worry about what will happen in two years three year time frame uh, i am I, i am against that internally and you are you are all justified in asking that question so in strategic planning point of view we have set out that we will grow faster than the market we will attempt 15% market share by fy 25 and that goal remains and the 8 to 8 and a half percent operating margin is the goal we are doing every action every decision is done keeping that in mind and whether one summer will be good another summer will be wash out we are prepared for that now equally blue stars portfolio if you look at it uh, we have kept buy on b2b as well as b2c this answer is i am taking time to answer because number of others who are following you uh, will get the clear perspective and direction thank you mm-hmm. thank you so much for that the second uh, question is on the numbers uh, the uh unallocable expense has increased materially if you look at it on a year on year basis all the segmental numbers look good uh, how should we read that number is it predominantly uh ant expenses uh, which is being shown up here and we should associate this with uh, the unitary product segment uh see the one of the reasons for unallocated may be unallocated you are talking about right no Yes, an allocated expense. See, uh, well, some of the expenses may be connected with. Uh, I, I'm, I, you know, there are. It is not one lump sum item which is changing. Point number one. There are multiple items. So the um, some are connected with uh, basically uh, the forex gain loss, which are really unallocated. The it is bought across. and there is one item there there is second item there are certain professional fees which we have incurred in order to either improve the manufacturing uh, margins or manufacturing excellence there are some exercises that are going on within the company and there was a, a campaign cutting across uh, the product lines there is says it is in the marketing expenses so really there is no lump sum item nor it is going to be the trend uh, our policy of allocating everything that is identifiable with the business that is con- that continues here all right thank you so much sir, for taking these questions thank you we have next question from the line of praveen sahai with prabhudas leela dal please go ahead yeah thank you for uh, taking my question and uh, uh, my question pertaining to what you had guided the new range of a product uh, going to be you know increase so it will be a uh, largely uh, the mass premium product segment uh, uh, which will be uh, you know from the sri city uh ccd will produce both uh, you know uh, for understanding now we are classifying in three ways now one is affordable second is affordable premium and uh, third is premium uh, so our three year strategic plan is based on these segments now it is, it is not the entire thing is affordable premium because we are doing something affordable as well something premium as well now uh, ccd as well as himachal plants will produce all kind of products the pro- new products that are going to be launched predominantly are in the affordable range some are in the premium range as well and uh, because there there you know we are i told you we are a number one player in institutional segment and uh, high end residential customers as well so there there are some products that are required for that segment as well which are premium affordable is needed because you want the margins to be protected at the same time you want to grow the market share in hindi speaking belt uh, so the products that will be launched for the seasons will be a mix of this too thank you for that one clarification on uh, what you had said about the 8 and 1/2% margin target 
so uh, fair to understand that whatever the benefit uh, from the three city you will receive it will uh, you know uh, pass on to the margin it will not uh, uh, you know consider for the some price uh, action to gain market share I I will not be able to commit something like this. So the the question is, as I am again repeating, the operating margin that we are supposed to deliver is, or we want to deliver, is eight to eight and a half percent. We have to grow faster than the market because the scale brings in lot of benefits as well because the scale leverage is very high in this business. Now, uh, whether as an analyst, you have to be taking into account your yeah, PLI benefit also will accrue to Blue Star. You must very well do that. Okay. Now, whether I'm keeping it separately as a profit and all, I won't be able to because for the simple reason, uh, the if you do these actions, it will flow in EBIT or PBT or PAT. Okay. So therefore, uh, your understanding is right. There is also a PLI, which is like I will save something in material, something due to scale and operating leverage. Uh, like that, there is also a PLI benefit that is available. But uh, you, you should know that uh, this year we are not getting any PLI benefit till March 2023. Uh, uh, if there is a PLI benefit, it will be in the subsequent year. Again, it is not going to flow every quarter, right? When you uh, see our first quarter of FI24, second quarter, third quarter, no PLI would have come in. You have to be showing the incremental sale. You have to be getting the chartered account and certificate filed with the DPIT, and then you have to get that money. So therefore, it is all that you can assume is there is a inherent benefit one is going to get. Mm -hmm. Got it, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Dhananjay Bagrodia with ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, congratulations on a great set of numbers again. Uh, so, just want to know with C City now, we've been focusing on it, and a lot more other players have also started uh, focusing on South. Uh, how would that, in terms of so much capacity coming, impact A and B? What margin, working capital, and asset turnover do we see for this project? Yeah, so the, uh, you know, uh, CCT in our case is going to be, because we never had a factory in the south, uh, so from commercial service, incoming raw material, as well as outgoing material, uh, have to, we were incurring huge costs there, and our, you have to hold the inventory of raw material as well as the finished goods also that 10 day period. So therefore, there is a cost leverage out there. In any case, our Himachal plant had has reached its full capacity. For In, in fact, the, if we wouldn't have commissioned this factory in record time, we would have fallen short of material. So it, it has come up come out in order to meet the requirement. Even Q4 requirement is going to be met by our, our getting the material from Blue Star Climatic Limited. Now, uh, so that is, a, uh, that is what, that is how it will impact. Now, what will be the, what will be the uh, working capital? It is not changing at all. In fact, working capital turns will improve because of CCT, okay? Uh, 10-day kind of finished goods inventory can be lower. Around 7-day uh, raw material inventory can be lower. And transportation costs, you can imagine that uh, CCT to Chennai or CCT to Madurai or CCT to Kochi versus uh, Kalam near Chandigarh too. So that is a clear cost saving that is going to happen. Now, therefore, the working capital requirement or working capital turns will be lower. Now, if you are asking about the interest depreciation, yes, you have invested in a factory and the break-even period, I think, is in the order of around three years or so, like any other investment. 
Uh, sure, sir. And so, just this might be a little longer term question, but so, so what are we doing in terms of our positioning in Room AC where we are being able to see such strong growth? And let's say a market leader is not being able to see the same level of growth, and it's not like we are undercutting them in prices. Uh, so, are we going through different channels? Or what would be our uh, strategy in this? Uh, honestly, I do not know at all. The, the question is that perhaps we were underperforming in the past because you are all asked, well, the competitor is doing much better. Why you are not doing was the question, right? So we were, yes. obviously, we had some inefficiencies we are catching up with. So I would uh, sincerely believe that because for... Uh, for more than uh, eight, nine quarters. See, if you look at the market leader versus us, uh, on a lagging basis, uh, market share or the volume, we were more or less following. At some point of a time, we divided because some scale benefit would have happened to the leader or whatever it is. And now the questions we were answering, uh, not only to you, to our team, our uh, uh, board, I, everybody, why we are not catching up with. Now I won't be able to answer why we caught up with. So okay. the point is we had inefficiency, probably. And so are we available with uh, many large uh, retailers like some of the ones which, uh, uh, or are we more with, uh, let's say, smaller mom and pop shops? Because uh, a lot of the large retailers uh, still are uh, still working with only the uh, little of the global brands or the Indian leader. Yeah, no, no. You see, I, I don't think distribution uh, is a challenge or bias or anything like that at all. The question is that he has got a set of customers. I, that client, how he will serve, you know, he has got uh, his geography, his history. He needs certain products, certain features, certain price points. Uh, I, we have disclosed this, that uh, in quite a few geographies, at that price point, the blue star will not be able to make the margin targets of ours. We didn't want to grow our market share by underselling it. So you have to be engineer with the position. It's only a two to three year story that we are repositioning our product portfolio. And uh, we are getting there and uh, still some more work to be done. It's not, it is, it is a 70% work is over in terms of product portfolio. I see, there is, uh, at the end of the day, you have to segment the market uh, very, very, uh, you know, in a minute uh, micro way. Uh, because when we say, you know, take India as a whole, when we say 130 billion people are there, uh, in quite a few product categories, it is only 30 million people are uh, even in FMCG. And there are quite a few categories that the customer base is only 1 million. So that is the situation in India as it grows. So we, we were very clear, 10% so up to 10% market share, you you could grow. Beyond 10%, unless and until you address those segments, you won't. So the moment you have a product for that segment, the dealer will go ahead and say, yes, I am able to display your product also. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not that they are against uh, taking Blue Star product. But the thing is, it will lie there. He doesn't get a customer who is willing to pay that premium. But we have corrected it. Sure. Okay. Uh, so... I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, so please come back in the question too. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly restrict questions to our participant. We have next question from the lineup Anupam Gupta from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So the first question is related to the project business. So clearly, order inflows and order book are growing very well for you. Uh, how do you see the outlook here for the next few quarters? And uh, should ideally the revenue uh, or the execution should also follow there, or do you see any slowdown in execution run rate uh, at this point of time, or let's say a couple of quarters down the line? The uh, execution pace will be good. In fact, uh, there is a lot of uh, pressure uh, in quite a few projects to get it executed. Uh, you know, the the capex obviously did not happen uh, according to the plans of many of the customers and then there had been pandemic and uh, all of them are willing to catch up and uh, they they would like to be ready when the global recession is over they are able to go ahead and supply same way quite a few infra projects uh, the public sector undertakings would like to complete as early as possible 
so there is uh, there is uh, at least until something completely unforeseen happens uh, everybody is putting pressure to get their projects executed so revenue will follow the order inflow so if you ask me about order inflow uh, outlook uh, the enquiry funnel is good uh, the across the segments uh, we get a surprisingly even the office space uh, is getting consumed okay okay understand and yeah, the second yeah, question yeah, is on the, the 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 question is that whether there will be headwinds i i am again telling you that there i am i am talking as a witness headwinds are going to be there you know that tomorrow itself something some sentiment can change after the union budget and all but we are confident that you see first of all i i have to for the benefit of you and others i have to tell you know we are talking about if it is room air conditioner some 17500 crore market in 2023 for this country one particular category 17500 crore looks very minuscule actually and uh, same day what is the total number of projects on mep getting finalized in a year it is some 6500 crore it is only 20% of what this country wants is getting built there is a 80% more to be so it is in that uh, flux where it is it is going to be providing consistent growth i am not saying it is going to uh you know uh, bombard in a big way and so much is but the growth uh, opportunities are good for our industry sure um understand that sir and the second question is related to the margins in this quarter specifically uh, so given that you have changed the depreciation policy if i look at the ebit margins for both the segments it see it obviously is uh, higher because of lower depreciation if i look q on q or y o y um so ideally your margin guidance should also be higher just because the depreciation would be lower incrementally going ahead at the at the segment at level so is that the right reading or would you still maintain your margin guidance at 8% 8.5% for project for products and 6.5% for project uh, so the the you know when we give you know so far our track record has been good by and large we have met what we have been indicating the question is our minimum margin target is that okay now it is going to increase uh, it, it it can happen but uh, all that i am saying in an outlook is we are maintaining the same margin level sure okay okay understand that's all thank you thank you we have next question from the line of gopal navandar with sbi life insurance please go ahead yeah hi sir uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity uh, sir uh, can you just give the <clears throat> rationale for the change in the depreciation accounting method and uh, is it uh, like uh, across all uh, plant and machinery we have changed or it is just only for the new capex which you have completed yeah so it uh, if you look at it uh, the change will be across because uh, what the standard requires or what the accounting estimates require is that we have to take into account what is the change in the pattern of consumption going forward uh, as you would have heard during the call that we have invested heavily in capacities this year uh, which means that there is additional capacity which has been put up both at shri city at wada which requires us to review the pattern of consumption for all our assets and looking at that it was felt appropriate that this is a right time to look at whether straight line method is a proper way of doing the depreciation uh, if you look at the policy it has always been that the useful life of an asset is defined as around 20 years and uh, for in normally any asset for a manufacturing company uh, it has to be equally depreciated over a period of time if you go by wdv method which also is an acceptable method almost 70 to 75% of the asset will get depreciated in 10 years so we have to look at the kind of industry but of course uh, we have been following it historically and the estimate requires us that only when there is a trigger we can give it a relook so this year given that we have capitalized a uh, large part of the plant and machinery there was an opportunity to give that relook and that is the reason why it was carried out 
so uh, what is the capex for uh, what was the uh, capitalized amount for uh, sri, sri city plant uh, it is not only for sri city plant we have also capitalized the wad up uh, the current uh, year and the total capitalization in the current year is in the region of around 280 crores so you know if i uh, multiply this amount uh, by uh, 15.6 whatever it is uh, multiply by 20 so that amount comes to 300 crore so are we saying there is uh, no uh, remaining uh, uh, depreciable amount from the past projects or no how 300 crore you see the capitalization for the full year will be 280 crores only my bad my bad my bad uh, and uh, and the thing is it is not that the new method the old method had a depreciation new method has a depreciation right so this quarter we have the figure which is uh, 10 crore is the impact impact yeah. yes so this this quarter and ytd also is only 10 crore impact okay yeah that, that because we are uh, doing it from the sense that 10 crore benefit has accrued because of the change in methodology which is disclosed as uh, disclosure as well uh, right sir uh, just continuing uh, from the I'm sorry to interrupt would you like to come back in the question queue thank you ladies and gentlemen please restrict questions to our participant we have next question from the line of manoj gori with equirus securities please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity sir so just want to reconfirm uh, you said about 15% market share so probably uh, if i am wrong uh, please correct me uh, is this 15% for fy24 or 25 that we are guiding for or we are aspiring for can i repeat the question 15% market share can i repeat the question yeah my question was you indicated uh, that the team person market share in rumis is by fy25 yeah. so probably what i presume earlier uh, you you have stated uh, 15% market share in fy24 so or cy24 so correct me uh, if i'm wrong it is fy25 it's fy25 so probably this year we should be exiting somewhere around 13.5 to 13.75% and probably next two years we will be uh, looking for another 100 to 150 basis point of market share gain that's right right sir so that's all from my end sir thanks and wish you all the best thank you thank you we have next question from the line of atul mehra with motilal oswal asset management please go ahead Hi, good evening and uh, congratulations on a good result. Uh, so, just one question in terms of uh, competitive intensity again. So, in a scenario where, like, like you said, if the market penetration is so low and it has so much room, uh, there can be competition for whom market share would be a priority over margin. While our philosophy is the two. So, in a, in in an environment where more of Well, competition focuses on market share over margin. Uh, like, how would you uh, react uh, in terms of uh, would you would you still want to maintain eight and a half at the cost of market share, or uh, would you revalue at that point in time? Thank you. Uh, you, you know, a genuine question, and uh, the the thing is, uh, we are very clear that uh, about a few things. Number one. we want to be a uh, air conditioning refrigeration focused company okay the questions have come up whether we will get into white goods etc the as of now we do not have any plans at all the second one is within this uh, there is opportunities within india and we have stated that we will enhance our international footprint this is the second part of it third is there is a huge construction cycle that is happening and capacity reduction is happening that is going to benefit not only the segment one and if so many so much of development is happening actually the penetration should grow the market should grow now one can go on and say that i will keep growing the market share and uh, at the cost of margin it is not making sense to us at all at the end of the day uh, the shareholders are looking for the returns 
So one may do the calculation and say that, look, you have a foolproof model that you go ahead and uh, dilute the prices, your market share will go up. Uh, which is not so. You don't have data sufficiently to say, I go on and dilute my margin by 1%, my market share will grow like this because in the market, uh, somebody else will drop and at the end of the day, the whole industry will be going down like this. Now, you will also see that what kind of margin the leaders in this category has produced and how long they produce and how sustainable it is and we are having that data point. At the moment, I do not have any data to show that you can improve your market share. I am I'm, I'm again saying nothing is guaranteed. If I go ahead and reduce the price, immediately I will go ahead and improve the market share. In a sustainable basis, I am not very sure at all. The consumer can be opportunistic. Where one quarter it will somebody else will drop the prices. Now, a yeah, product like room air conditioners has uh, a brand value, consumer preference, and uh, price alone is not the factor. So it will, according to me, according to our company's philosophy, it will be very futile exercise to go ahead and say, I want to grow, become, instead of 15%, 20%, and I go ahead and dilute my margin to 6%. Uh, there is no rationale for this at all. And the moment I go down that path, uh, yeah, my product will sell only on price. And uh, each time I want to deliver to a dealer, distributor, he will only be asking for it.